Starting a horse under saddle and giving him his first few rides is an exhilarating experience. But just as thrilling as starting a horse is, it's equally as dangerous. Young, untrained horses are unpredictable, and in the wrong hands are ticking time bombs. Working with revered Aussie horseman Gordon McKinlay, Clinton cut his teeth as a trainer, breaking in hundreds of colts, many wild-eyed brumbies straight from the outback. The lessons Clinton learned under Gordon's tutelage make the basis of his approach to starting horses today. With an emphasis on safety for horse and rider, Clinton's colt starting method has helped thousands of horsemen start their colts under saddle and develop lifelong partnerships with them. Last August, 30 horsemen and their colts arrived at the ranch for the most challenging clinic down under horsemanship offers. Working in merciless heat and dodging thunderstorms, their horsemanship skills were tested to the max and their ability to handle the stress and pressure of the situation made for a life-changing experience. G'day mate, Clint Anderson here. Well, welcome to our Cult Starting Diary series. We're gonna walk you through day by day of our 10-day Cult Starting series, and Jeff Davis, our professional clinician, is going to be teaching it. This is gonna be an excellent opportunity for you guys to see behind the scenes footage of what it's like to actually be in a cult starting clinic. We only do this clinic once a year, and this is the last time that it was gonna be held here in Stephenville, Texas. I can't wait to show you this footage, mate. For the first time in the history of Down Under Horsemanship, Clinton put the entire Colt starting clinic in the hands of a professional clinician. The honor and immense responsibility went to Jeff Davis, a veteran horseman and master instructor. Jeff Davis has been studying the method in depth since he was a kid. I remember Jeff showing up when he was 12, 13 years old and uh, when we would do tours in Florida, he'd be sitting in the front row, taking notes, you know, paying attention, listening. His mother would bring him to the tours. He came to the academy. He stayed on for three years, worked with me every day side by side and eventually graduated as a professional clinician. That's our highest level of graduation. So basically anything that I can teach in the method, he knows how to do and he can teach as well. So Jeff has been to lots of these cult starting clinics when he worked for me, and now I feel like he's ready that he can actually conduct the clinic, teach it, and do an excellent job of it. I'm very proud of Jeff Davis, and this is a great example of how the method is beyond me. I've always told people that 100 years from now, I couldn't care less if anybody remembers my name. But what I do care about is in 100 years from now, people are still applying the method to their horses. What you're going to see these horses do over the next 10 days how you'll see these horses act, ride, and behave, in 10 days from now, they're going to be more broke and more civilized and safer and more respectful than I'd say probably 80% of the horses in the country that people ride on trails right now. And, and I'm gonna show you how we did this step by step. So, you know, the fact that Jeff can teach this in the exact order that I've laid it out and I, you know, put it together is a testament to how the method is moving on beyond me. My job now is to let people like Jeff Davis and the other professional clinicians and method ambassadors go out and teach the rest of the world what the method is. The clinic took place August 28th through September 7th during a blistering heat wave. With 30 participants slated to attend, Jeff knew he'd need a capable team to help him get every horse and rider safely through the clinic. He enlisted five clinicians and ambassadors to join him. <music> Shayla has been a clinician since 2015 and travels the world teaching all levels of the method. 
Rick has been by Clinton's side since the start of Down Under Horsemanship and became a Method Ambassador in 2017. A native Australian, Josh earned his Method Ambassador certification in 2016 and enjoys training horses and helping owners get results with their equine partners. Brock graduated the Academy as a Method Ambassador in 2018 and has been helping horse owners achieve their dreams ever since. A former certified clinician, Mitch dusted off his boots and hat to come out of retirement to lend Jeff a helping hand. Out of all the clinics that we do, this is by far the most stressful, this cult starting clinic. It's the most stressful, why? Because it's theoretically the most dangerous. We're, te we're dealing with horses that are unbroke. We're dealing with horses that have never had a saddle on their back, never had a rider on their back. The majority of these horses are barely halter broke. So we're dealing with a high risk situation. And in some cases, we've got people that don't necessarily have the right skill set to be doing this. So our job is to keep everybody alive. Our job is to keep everybody safe. Our job is to keep the horses safe. So it's, it's no easy feat at all. Not only are we trying to keep everybody safe and everybody's horse safe, but we're trying to keep everybody moving along roughly in the same uh, direction or you know, same level. Like for example, we have some riders in the clinic that are extremely good riders. We have other riders in the clinic that are kind of beginnerish. So we, we can't tailor the clinic to the advanced people and we can't tailor it to the beginning people. We're trying to get both groups of riders to kind of come together and keep learning together. So that is not an easy feat. Jeff Davis has four or five of our clinicians and method ambassadors that are helping throughout the clinic. And that way, when somebody needs a little extra help, or a little extra attention, or they need a little more tutoring, we can give that to them. Or if somebody's a little bit scared, we can get them off the horse, we can get one of our trained people on the horse and continue, continue on with the horse's training. Like what you see? Then get the app. Join the club and watch it all, anytime, anywhere, on any device. Experience the mobile method today. Participants arrived at the ranch the day before the start of the clinic to move in and get their colts settled into their new home for the next 11 days. The horsemen came from all across the United States as well as Canada. Those traveling from the east battled a tropical storm Thankfully, everyone arrived safely. Participants either camped at the ranch in their living quarters trailers or stayed in town. After caring for their horses, participants headed to the classroom where they set up their lawn chairs, drank coffee, and visited with one another until Jeff got the clinic officially underway. Okay, good morning guys. I like how you arrange yourselves. I didn't have to say anything. This is nice. I think you're all afraid that your faces are going to be on camera. So welcome to the cult starting guys. We appreciate you guys coming out. I know a lot of you guys had a long trip. Okay, some of you guys are coming from some sorry weather, so I appreciate you guys making the trip. After welcoming everyone to the clinic, Jeff shared an overview of what participants should expect the next 11 days and stressed the seriousness of the journey they were about to embark on. You know, we tell you all the time, our, I'm not gonna tell you that our method's the best method or it's the only method or it's the only way to do this. There's a lot of ways of doing this. There's a lot of ways of starting cults, okay? You know, you name it, you go around the country, you look at any other men and women around the country, there's a lot of ways of starting cults and a lot of those ways work really well. Nothing wrong with that. I will tell you this, this is by far the safest way to start cults. My number one goal when I'm working with a horse is I don't want to get hurt. What separates probably our method and our cult starting method in particular is that safety is at the core of this deal. Clinton was a horse trainer, not a clinician. So when you're a horse trainer, your body is your most valuable asset, okay? There's no 
You don't have employees that can just go do your job for you, okay? Especially when you're starting out and you're a starving horse trainer and you're trying to ride 10, 12 horses a day, you get hurt out there doing something stupid because you wanted to get on a colt on its first day or something like that and it bucks you off and breaks your leg and you're sitting up for six months, you're not making any money. You're not gonna be able to feed yourself, much less pay the doctor bills. So safety is very much at the core of what we're doing here. When we're out here on a regular basis ourselves, it's not like I'm telling you to do one thing and we do another. This is how we do it ourselves. This is the, the steps that we would take to make sure things go well. One of the things that definitely separates our program a little bit from a lot of other people's is we're not really in a hurry to get on the Colts. We're gonna get a lot of we're gonna get a lot done with the Colts, and I'll kind of lay out sort of the goal for the clinic, the rough goal, you know, here in a bit. Um, but we're not really in a hurry to get right on them. There used to be a young man, he was a little older than me in my hometown, that I was kind of starting colts and he kind of had his own little colt starting operation himself right down the road from me. And his sort of um, shtick, if you will, was his advertisement was get most colts ridden within the first hour of groundwork. And I remember seeing that, I was a teenager at the time, I remember seeing that thinking, first hour of groundwork, like it's taking me a couple of days to get on these colts. And at first I'm thinking like, I doing something wrong here? Like, am I going too slow? Well, I would watch him, you know what I mean? I was trying to learn a few things, so I'd go over there and I'd watch him. And you want to talk about the first hour of groundwork, some of these things are still pretty nasty. Now, the good news for him is he could ride. He grew up riding horses, grew up starting colts, family had a ranch, and that's pretty much what he had done uh, his whole life up until that point. So yeah, when they buck and carry on and crashed into the fence and fell over in their round pin and he had to ride them up and he's fanning them with his hat and all that. It was like a fun thing for him, you know what I mean? It was a, hey, this is, this is pretty friggin' Western. I like this, okay? And I remember watching that even then thinking, I don't know that this is a long-term strategy. Like, I don't know that I can become an old horse trainer doing what you're doing right now, okay? And I started noticing that over the years, little things, I'd start, you know, like, you wear that knee brace a lot. You always wear that? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I've had a busted this up and reconstructive surgery on this. And he wore a back brace a lot. And this is like a 23-year-old man. You know, he's not very old at all, okay? So you're pretty busted up already. Why? What's the harm in taking a week to get on a colt? You got the rest of its life to actually either set it up for success or ruin it for the rest of its life. What's a week in a horse's life, okay? I explain to people a lot here when we talk about, like you see any of Clinton's trained horses, you know, Marty, Diaz, any of these other trained horses, Mindy. Uh, if we were gonna retrain one of those horses, it takes two years, roughly about five, six days a week on a consistent basis, it takes two years to retrain one of those horses. Two years, that's 104 weeks. For two weeks, don't worry about what lead it's on and don't worry about the perfect circle and the perfect headset and that it does this and it does that and it's changing leads. Okay, for another 102 weeks, knock yourself out. Get as picky as you wanna be. When you break it down like that, it kinda sounds like, man, two weeks is a drop of water in a horse's lifetime, okay? If you're gonna ride the horse until he's, you know, 20 years old, let's just be real conservative, let's say 15 years old, you got time, okay? Take your time, do the job right, and set the colts up for success. Remember what you're doing here, guys. When we say cult starting, we'll get a little bit more personal about this. You're setting up their career. You're either setting up their career for you to ride or somebody else to ride. So you can either make that a good experience and set them up for success, or you can wreck their confidence in a hurry and then you or somebody else will be working against that forever. You really can't undo a foundation on a horse. You really can't, okay? Especially not if it's gone on for some time, okay? Now when I say you can't undo it, we undo it all the time here, but when I say undo it, you're really not. You're working against it. That's what you're doing. It's there, okay? We'll get colts that have come in here, and a great example of this, we had a colt a few years ago that came in bucking with the saddle really bad. I mean, as soon as you set it on its back, you couldn't even get the girth done up before it started bucking with the saddle. And the people had told us, well, you can't ride him with a back cinch. We tried to work him with a back cinch, and he kept trying to buck the saddle off or whatever. So what do they do? they just pull the back cinch off. You know, that's the way to do it. You just try to get around it and pretend it doesn't exist. That's a great way to fix any problem, okay? So we're gonna ride it with a back cinch because we gotta figure out what the heck's going on. And it probably took three and a half weeks of saddling it. And I would, I would tell you, I bet we saddled that colt 25 times a day. You do an exercise with it, pull the saddle off, resaddle it, go lunge it again. Pull the saddle off, resaddle it, go lunge it again probably about 20 to 25 times a day for about three and a half weeks and we finally got it to quit bucking with the saddle. But here's the thing, 
you start messing that up at home, you miss it, you don't do something, he was a little tight and you just hustled him off and whipped him on the rear end anyway, he'll go right back to doing that, okay? Now, is that a waste of time working with? No, it's not a waste of time, but you gotta realize, this is what you got now. This is what you've got to deal with now because either you or somebody else set it up poorly, now you're working against that. No different than if your horses at home, your older horses, if they've got habits, they came from somewhere, you either let them get away with these habits or you created them or somebody else before you owned the horse created the habits and now you are stuck with them, okay? So colts are no different. In this 10 days, we're trying our very best to set the colts up for a good start. So it's very, very important that things go smoothly. Things can happen. I'm not saying you can't make mistakes when you're starting a colt. Okay, you can certainly make mistakes when you're starting a colt, but you need to try to get these things corrected. And there are certain things that are sort of like, um, unforgivable, right? You know, these are like, that's a big deal. You know, take for example, the first saddling. When we go to first saddle these colts, if that first saddling goes really well, you got a much, much better chance of not having those kind of issues, that bucking and setting back when you, you know, you tie them up to the fence and they pull back and flip over as soon as you pull the girth tight and this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But you get in there and you saddle him, you don't get that girth real tight, and he humps a couple times, and the saddle goes under his belly, it scares the heck out of him, and he crashes into the round pin and rips the saddle off and kicks it out over the fence. Okay, we're in for it now, you know what I mean? His very first experience with something kind of traumatic for him, which just wrecked it, okay? And now that's something that you're gonna have to deal with. I've always told people the most important time of a horse's life is the first six weeks under saddle. That lays the foundation for the rest of his career. If it's a great concrete foundation, you can build a lot of cool stuff on top of it. But if it's a bad concrete foundation and it's weak and, and poorly built, whatever you build on top of it, even if it's great lumber and great house, it'll keep falling down. So it's extremely important that whoever you have start your cults be, be a great horseman, have good field time and experience, know the method, because what he learns will stick with him with the rest of his life. I cannot stress that enough. Want more? Get more. The No Worries Club is the best way to get the most out of your training experience. Stick around to find out more. Hey mate, Clint Anderson here. For the past 20 years, I've devoted my life to creating the best training tools and videos available to help bring my method to you. But there's only one problem. You can't bring your TV into the arena. <laughs> That's why we've been hard at work developing a new platform to deliver the method to you in a whole new way. A way that brings 20 years of horsemanship and puts it in the palm of your hand. Introducing the mobile method. It's part of the new Down Under digital experience and it makes learning the method easier than ever before. Let me show you how it works, mate. Now you can always have access to the method, even when you're on the go or at the barn. The Down Under Horsemanship app gives you access to your digital training kits and allows you to download videos and training content directly to your mobile device or view them on your computer. The Down Under Horsemanship app also offers over 86 hours of free in-depth training content. No worries, club members will have full access to Clinton's ever-growing training library and a massive amount of members-only features and information. And the best part is, you can view and interact with each lesson on your mobile device or computer, giving you ultimate access to the method anytime and any place. The method is the key to getting the most out of your partnership with your horse. We want everybody to experience the difference it will make. That's why we created three new ways for you to get the training content you need at the price you want. Our basic level allows you to purchase and download training content to your device at our standard price with no annual fee. When you become a No Worries Club member for $19.99 a month, you get up to 50% discount on any of your purchases. Plus you get eight digital videos and four digital journals a year and access to the No Worries Club website, the largest collection of method material and resources in the world. 
Plus, you can become part of our social network and chat with thousands of other folks just like you. If you want the ultimate experience, mate, the premium membership is for you. You get all the benefits of the No Worries Club, a printed copy of our No Worries Club quarterly journal, and access to all of the method and the professional series kit training videos. Altogether, that's thousands of dollars of horse training and 20 years of horsemanship delivered right to your fingertips. So there you have it, folks. The new Mobile Method app is the easiest and most effective way to deliver the maximum amount of knowledge at a minimal amount of time. And with the new No Worries Club, you can be assured you're going to get exactly what you need at a price that's right for you. It's a free download, so what are you waiting for, mate? Get started today. Start your digital training experience today. Visit our website and download the Down Under Horsemanship app to experience the method in a whole new way.